Hello, welcome to the March 1st, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. We have written about the Emotet malware multiple times in the past. In particular, of course, Brad has written about quite a number of variants. If you don't remember it, well, Emotet is typically arriving as an attachment claiming to be an invoice. This invoice then usually triggers a number of word macros that are used to download additional code. Security researcher Max Kirsten wrote an interesting blog post about the latest version of this malware. And what's different about the blog post is that he doesn't just analyze the Emotet sample itself that he found, but he was also able to get access to the web server that's actually delivering the malware and to the PHP code used to accomplish this. The PHP code actually turned out to be quite involved and like the malware itself, the PHP code goes through quite a few steps and obfuscation in order to make it more difficult to identify this PHP code. Probably the authors that are deploying this PHP code, typically on compromised websites, are somewhat afraid that anti-malware on the web server may actually identify this code. So for example, the code itself is obfuscated and encoded, then written to a file on the file system on the web server, not necessarily in the document route, and then read back and the eval command in PHP is used to actually execute that code. Also, a rather large list of regular expressions is being used to identify the operating system of the victim based on the user agent. And then a specific response is crafted based on whatever operating system was identified. The only thing that's really not clear from the blog post is how that particular code ended up on this web server. But of course, that could be any number of particular web application vulnerabilities. And users of Kaspersky antivirus are having issues for about a month now if they're using Google Chrome. The problem is that Kaspersky will display spurious invalid certificate warnings. Now, the root cause here apparently is Chromecast. Chromecast devices on the local network will connect with Google Chrome on the same network. And since these devices use self-signed certificates issued by Google, which of course are trusted by Google Chrome, but not necessarily recognized as trusted by Kaspersky. Well, this is sort of what's triggering these error messages. What makes this a bit more complex is that many of the affected users don't realize that they do have a Chromecast device on their network since many modern smart TVs come with Chromecast built in. The scanning for Chromecast devices within Chrome happens via the Chrome media router. This is a hidden extension, so it's nothing the user can easily disable. Google and Kaspersky are, however, apparently working on a solution to this problem. And it has been a little bit quiet recently about the MageCard group. That's the group that injected JavaScript into payment pages, usually via infected third-party libraries that are being included in these pages. Well, Flashpoint and Risk IQ got together and wrote up a nice summary about sort of what's new and uh, what has changed about MageCard recently. In this summary, they go over some of the small changes in tactics, like for example, example, how they tightened up some of their code, how they added more JavaScript event listeners. If you are dealing in particular with websites that are requesting payments from users and deal with payment cards, you probably do want to take a look at the report to see that you got yourself covered. 
And Wireshark released a new version, version 3.0, and the first release for version 3. One of the major changes affects Windows users. In the past, Wireshark used WinPCAP. WinPCAP was the standard library for Windows, but hasn't been maintained for a couple of years and was based on LibPCAP 100, which actually was released 2008. Eight. The new packet capture library that Wireshark is using is NPCAP. NPCAP is still actively maintained, last released last July, and based on LibPCAP 181 from 2016. Also, a lot of sort of nice little security changes here, like for example that this NPCAP library is cross-signed by Microsoft, so it can actually be used in, for example, Windows 10 1607 that does have stricter driver signing requirements. That's it for today. Thanks for listening. Remember, next week, RSA, I will be there again on our panel with Alan, Ed, and Heather, if you are looking for some you know, Storm Center stickers, I'll try and drop off some at the Sands booth at RSA. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.